We're joined by who I like to say is the queen of Queen's Park, uh, columnist extraordinaire, Christina Blizzard. All right, Alex just uh, basically uh, rhymed off uh, all these uh, new, some faces that are new, most uh, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on who you are, not uh, new uh, in this particular uh, situation. I want to start with Deb Matthews. It's a big portfolio. Uh, she's uh, staying on with health and deputy premier. Yeah. What's up with that? Well, of course, Deb Matthews co-chaired Kathleen Wynne's leadership campaign. Yeah. So, uh, and she is the sister-in-law of uh, David Peterson, who, of course, is a powerhouse in uh, provincial uh, the liberal circles. So she pretty well got whatever she wanted, wow. which was back in health. Frankly, if I had been Kathleen Wynne, I'd have moved her out of health. If any ministry needs a shakeup, it is that one. We've had the Orange Air Ambulance scandal. We've had numerous of the, the e-health boondoggle. It needed a fresh face on it. All right. Uh, speaking of fresh faces, uh Charles Souza, finance minister. I'm going to withhold my comment for now until I dig deeper into this particular angle. But uh, Alex just said he's a, a bank executive. Well, I don't know, Anita. <laughs> You're the person who knows all the movers and shakers. Well, on I Bay can Street. tell you, I don't. I haven't heard that he's a mover and shaker, so I don't know what that tells us. What does that tell you? So I don't know if, if, Somebody if up the he, resume we too just much, haven't or? kept up with that, yeah. or if perhaps <laughs> has been a little overblown. Oh, but um, certainly, he is someone from the Portuguese community who was actually financing loans for, um, you know, small businessmen in the, in that community and I guess was hired by the bank to run that business for them, which was a smart move. I was going to make a line, a joke about the Portugal debt crisis, but I won't. Well, well we won't, we won't <laughs> go, maybe won't go there. He is, uh, the other problem he has, of course, is that he's the billion dollar man. Right. He's the guy in Mississauga, the western part of the GTA. Uh, he lobbied very hard to get rid of the gas-fired uh, plant, uh, generating plant that was there and eventually got it moved at a cost some people think of as much as a billion dollars wow. so every time he gets up in the legislature uh, the opposition is going to have a lot of fun with that one. All right let's talk about uh, Kathleen Wynne I'm sure she's going to have a lot of fun uh, being the premier of the province I don't know for how long uh, but also agriculture minister what's up with that Christina? Well from Don Valley West <laughs> I think it's a little patronizing and somewhat condescending for her to um, to take on this role. You heard her speech, right, when she said, I represent all of Ontario, not just Toronto. So clearly she has a chip on her shoulder. Well, yeah, but the, the other thing was the Liberals got got trounced yeah. in rural Ontario. People hate the wind turbines they brought in. They closed a lot of schools there. They uh, More recently, they have uh, set out to, some people who think, destroy the horse racing industry by with uh, withdrawing the slots revenue that was going to support horse racing in this province. Now, they've given them transition funding, but that's only for two years. So a lot of people in, uh, you know, in the farm country are worried about what's going to happen when that Ends. Well, let me ask you what's going to happen. Do you think she's put together a cabinet that's going to give her uh, another win if so, if she so chooses to go to the uh, to the electorate or not? Well, that's absolutely the key question, Anita. I mean, it's uh, does she have enough you know, uh, enough fresh faces to be able to say I didn't have anything to do with Dalton McGuinty and all that stuff? Look at um, uh, energy uh, is going to be a big big problem for her. She's got uh, Bob Shirelli from Ottawa, mm -hmm. uh, who's an all hand and a guy, you notice she put a guy who doesn't have much of a future career. No young politician would want to take on that very contentious energy portfolio. I don't know if she can do it. I'm not sure this is really there. It's still same old, same old. Okay, you're talking about Bob Shirelli taking over the yeah. uh, the energy uh, portfolio after uh, the break. I know we're talking to uh, the energy critic uh, for the PCs, uh, Vic Fideli. Right. What would you want to ask him? Well, you know, are, are the Tories going to come back yeah. with the contempt motion? Which I think they will. They also want to have at least a legislative committee probe. We still there are a lot yeah. of questions about that, about the the uh, decision to shut down uh, the building of those. Two plants. That is a huge issue. I believe it's what actually triggered uh, Dalton McGuinty's resignation mm -hmm. and the shutdown of the legislature. But there are some huge questions to come out of that still. Oh, questions that we're going to keep asking until we get to the bottom of it, right, Christina? Oh, I hope so, yes. All right. As always, uh, great analysis. Thanks so much for coming in. I know you're super busy. Oh, my pleasure, Anita, anytime. All right. That is, of course, Christina Blizzard, Toronto Sun's Queen's Park columnist. And as we just mentioned, next hour, Ontario PC energy critic, Vic Fideli will be
be joining us. He's been a thorn in the Liberals' side on the canceled gas plant debacle. You won't want to miss that interview and what he has to say.